Testing, 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 testing. Is that good for you? Testing, testing. Microphone check, microphone check. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, first things first, man. Um, I just want to give honor where honor is due. Uh, thank you so much, Kevin, for uh, the invite and allowing me to come and share this story of, of what God's done in my life, man. Um, the Bible says give honor where honor is due, and that's what I want to do. And to you and all your team, your leadership team. Um, it's a good, it's a Friday night. I can think of a lot of other places that we, we've been. It's a good place to be in the house of the living. Um, let me pray real quick. Uh, Holy Spirit, I just thank you for this time, God. We just give it back to you. We thank you for what you're going to do. Have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. Good evening, Forever Family. I'm a grateful believer in Jesus. I have victory over meth, heroin, pills, and alcohol for over three years. God is uh, he's walking me to a place of victory and sexual integrity. My name is Rowdy. Hi, Rowdy. Hi guys. Um, first thing I want to say is if you're new here to celebrate recovery or just starting to think about beginning recovery, welcome home. You have a place here. You belong here. We're family. Forever family. We all struggle with different things in life. We fight different battles. Some you can see, kind of like my food addiction. Others you can't see, like my negative self-talk within my own head. I'm here today to hopefully give you hope. That if God can save me from what he saved me from, he can save you too, no matter where you're at. You just have to be honest with God. you got to be honest with yourself. And for me personally, that was one of the hardest things that I ever had to do in life. I was so used to lying to myself and to everyone else that I had just naturally fallen in denial in so many areas. I told myself, it's all good. Meanwhile, my life was falling to hell. Um, the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 13, it's proof of your faith. Many people will praise God because you will be the good news of Christ, the gospel that you say you believe in because you freely share with them and with others. So that's what I'm doing tonight. I'm obeying God. I'm sharing his good news with y'all. Celebrate recovery principle eight. It says, yield myself to be used to bring good news to others, both by my example and by my words. I was born October 14, 1984 in Thousand Oaks, California. To Robert and Andrea. As of today, I'm the oldest of 10 brothers and sisters, not all by blood, some by marriage, others through the foster system in the state of Arizona. Uh, Robert, my real father, has remarried to my stepmom, Mandy. She was actually my Sunday school teacher when I was younger at the church we all attended as a family. Uh, my mama, she is remarried to the man I now call dad. His name is Eddie. Uh, from the earliest memories, I can remember going to church. I was always at church. I guess you can say at least I was in the church with seeds being planted in my heart at a very young age. The Bible says, train your children in the ways of God when they're young, and when they're older, they won't depart. I departed. I've just come back as a prodigal. I can remember all the Bible story teachings that my stepmom Mandy taught me uh, with her mom Elaine in Sunday school at Phoenix Community Church. It was a Southern Baptist church that we all attended. Honestly, I don't really remember the Holy Spirit or emphasis on the Holy Spirit. Mainly just God the Father and Jesus the Son and what he did on the cross. The Holy Spirit I knew lived inside of me because I was saved and sealed by God. It's what they taught me. It's what I believed. I've always had a very sensitive spirit and just believed a lot of what people have said, especially about the Bible. It's, it's actually allowed for a lot of the hurts to come into my life. And it's led to many of the habits that have oftentimes destroyed anything God was trying to do that was good in my life. Um, I grew up in North Phoenix with Robert and Andrea and my only full-blood sibling, my sister Jade. Uh, I've always been the short, fat kid. So I was always picked last or not picked at all for the team sports and schools. Um, the jocks, other kids, man, they were mean because I was the fattest kid in the class, man, even though my mom just said I was big-boned. Uh, needless to say, finding friends or my place, it was really hard. A lot of them were pretty mean to me. I got bullied as a kid. Um, in the late 80s, early 90s, I started seeing my parents fight a lot more. They started arguing and yelling and other sorts of things. They were working their way towards divorce, which in turn 
would set me off and the more of the bad choices I would choose to make over and over in life. A lot of times, honestly, I was just looking for a reason to get in trouble. When my mom left, I believe that's when the spirit of rebellion entered into my life. I had a lot of it in my heart from a very young age. Everything that the adults, the grown-ups, the authority figures, my teachers, anybody that was in authority in my life and told me not to do something, that's usually what I did. <laughs> um, it's where a lot of the hang-ups came in. We, we've all got different definitions for hurts, habits, and hang-ups, which is why I say celebrate recovery is for everyone. We have to break the stigma that's only for drug addicts and alcoholics. We all have hurts, habits, and hang-ups if we're being honest with God and we're being honest with ourselves tonight. We have something tonight that we need to lay at the feet of Jesus. Jesus is enough. Jesus is more than enough. Once mom was gone, it was no more visits, no phone calls, no mail. It was nothing. It was like mom was just gone. And it was me and my sister Jade and my father Robert. Uh-oh. Me and him were a lot alike, man. So we used to butt heads constantly. Again, I was a bad kid. I'll own that. But he wasn't the best father. And with no mom around, it was literally all on him. Standing here today, I can tell you that he did the best he could with what he had and with what he knew. One thing I did start to find out in middle school as I grew up, I started to pay more attention in school. I realized that God actually gave me a really smart brain. Um, I tested in the United States Army in 2004 with an ASFAB score of 127. It's very high. It allowed me the option of serving any branch or anywhere in military intelligence. But I was denied because I entered the military with a waiver because uh, I was arrested in high school for threatening to kill my teacher on the anniversary of the Columbine, Has Columbine High School mass shooting. Horrible timing. Story of my life. I entered high school being accepted into the International Baccalaureate program. It's the IB program. It's for smart people. Back then in the state of Arizona, there was one class a year accepted into the IB program. Um, I got accepted into it with a 98 percentile. Needless to say, God gave me a brain. I just didn't always choose to use it. <clears throat> if I would have just stopped myself and asked myself, is what I'm about to do going to help me or hurt me? I probably would have saved myself a lot of hell in life. I probably never would have went to prison for burglary in 2011 for robbing an Arizona State University frat house. It was the Christian frat house. Um, uh, in high school, I started using drugs, which included marijuana, LSD, acid, ecstasy, prescription medications, cocaine, cat tranquilizer. Uh, we called it Special K. Um, even meth, but no heroin at this point. So I was okay. Um, <laughs> Jesus, Lord help me. <laughs> um, so I, I, w I was on the right track because I was, everyone else I knew was doing the same things that I was doing. I'm telling you, you show me who you're hanging out with, who your friends are, and I'll show you where you're going and what you're going to be doing in life. I always found the worst people in life, no matter where I was. It was like I had this huge sign over my head that was blinking in these neon lights and said, got drugs, need drugs, I can help. Throughout my childhood, because of the rebellion towards my father, I was always grounded for very long periods of time, sometimes six months or longer than a year, sometimes whole school years. The summer before high school started, my uh, father, Robert, sent me to India. India. Not Indiana, India. <laughs> I was over there for almost two months. They called it a mission trip. I called it an eye-opener. I, I got to see what the real world was like. I got to see poverty, brokenness, need, like I had never seen before. And honestly, it broke my heart for people. It showed me how good we have it here in America. Still, I was a disobedient child and I was in rebellion. When I came home, Robert asked me if I he had another option for me, that I could go live with my mom and her new boyfriend, Eddie, who had just gotten out of prison. Remember, he's the one I now call dad. Uh, so I started high school, living with mom and dad, attending North Canyon in the IB program. I was really on my way to what, you ask? Ditching 109 different classes my first semester of freshman year. Bad way to begin school. I'd always coped with television and food while I was living at Robert's house. Now that I was at mom and dad's, I was able to be free and do whatever I wanted. I began to find really bad people to hang out with in high school, 
we all started getting high and drinking together. Mom and dad pretty much let, they let me do whatever I wanted to do. Uh, but they told me if I was going to use drugs or if I was going to drink, they wanted me to do it at home in my room so they knew that I was safe. Me and dad actually started getting high together in high school. It was a, it was a weird way. We, we were hiding it from mom because we knew she'd be pissed if she found out. But in some weird way, it was like kind of for us to bond together, I guess. Because he had just gotten out of prison and he was older than me. It was just a way for us to connect. Um, I, I do not recommend getting high with your children. Do not get high with your kids. <laughs> Through all these years, man, I was, I, I was really, I've never been looking for any girlfriends. Um, it's only, I've only had one night stands, hookups. I, I have no kids. I've never been married. Never even had a real girl. It's always just been about me. Selfish. Me, me, me. I feel like that. Marsha. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. <laughs> um, what, what would please me? It's always been about me, making me happy. What's going to make me feel good? Um, I'm changing that now in my life. It's not about me. Um, during my high school years, I dropped out for a couple years, but I did end up going back and graduating and walking in the class of 2004. Thank you. During these empty years, I was actually involved with the Mexican Mafia. Um, I had become connected with the cartel family, and we were getting dope delivered to mom and dad's house. It was literally one call away. Whatever I wanted, um, I could call them and they would drop it off. I didn't even have to have the money for it. They, I, they would drop it off. I'd sell it, call them. They'd bring more and I'd give them their money. It didn't matter. It would eight ball of cocaine, an ounce of meth, seven pounds of marijuana, all in brown bags. It was literally one call away. So me and dad soon realized mom was out getting high on meth again while we were at home using cocaine together. So we started to get clues that mom was back in addiction while we were using cocaine every day. I, I just had to run, because it's what I do, I run. Where did I go? I ran back to my father Robert's house, the only other place I knew to run. And once I was there and I was settled, excuse me. <clears throat> Roberts. <clears throat> And once I was there and I was settled, Robert told me that I had to figure out something else. <laughs> I had to figure out somewhere to go. And I'm like, man, <laughs> I just got here. Um, that's when I actually began to look into the military. I figured maybe I could have a military career. It's what my grandpa did in the Air Force, which is what I first looked into. But at the time, in 2004, when I joined, there was a 13-month waiting list for the Air Force. Robert said, I'm not waiting for you that long. You got to do something else. So I looked at the Marines and how they were working out. I was like, I am not going the Marines. So I ended up looking into the U.S. Army. Um, in 2004, I joined the Army as a supply soldier working in the supply cage. I was a 92 Alpha Automated Logistical Systems Specialist. Unfortunately, you can't run from yourself. In the military, I got a $10,000 enlistment bonus. So I had all this money, but still there I was, stuck with myself. I was unhappy, I was miserable inside. No matter where I went, there I was. I did my basic training in Fort Jackson, South Carolina. I did my advanced individual training in Fort Lee, Virginia. I was actually the number one student in AIT, but I lost it because of another bad choice the weekend before graduation. I, I wore my diamond earrings to formation. Men in the military are not allowed to have earrings in formation. They stationed me in Anchorage, Alaska for my duty station which was a three-year tour. Thank you for your service, sir. Um, it's one of the few duty stations around the world that are mandatory, three-year stays, at those specific Army bases. I'm an Arizona boy, and so for them to stick me up in Alaska in the snow and cold, it made me even more miserable because it was like there was nothing to do and it was always cold. Uh, so what did everybody in the military do? We drank together. It's kind of how we all bonded. Well, it's just kind of what we did together, man. So, of course, I did what I ended up always doing, finding some dope, because it's what I'm good at. <clears throat> but it wasn't, it was actually a lot of cocaine, um, because even though I was in Alaska, I connected with the mafia and had them send it up to Alaska. I ended up going absent without AWOL uh, four different times. Eventually, I entered in the military drug and alcohol treatment program, which did not help me because I did not work it. If you've been around Celebrate Recovery for a while, 
we have a few things that we say as a forever family. A couple of them are keep coming back. And the other one is it works if you work it. In October 2006, the U.S. Army court-martialed me. And I ended up serving 36 days in the military brig. It's the military prison. Upon release from the military, I went back to mom and dad's in Arizona. I landed October 6th of 2006 back in Arizona. And I found out my dad very soon was going back to prison for four more years. We actually turned him in November 7th, 2006. It was really hard news for me to come home to. Honestly, it broke me. By Christmas of 2006, me and mom were using dope together. Meth has stolen so much from me and my family. God's currently in the process of restoring and redeeming us and healing us all in Jesus' name. In 2008, God tried to wake me up. I was in my third car accident. This one was the worst of it all. I broke both my legs. I was in a wheelchair for over a year. I had to relearn to walk again. Talk about being humbled by God. I fell asleep and hit a light pole. <sighs> I had metal, roots, metal rods and screws and played in my hip. They're constant reminders in my body, especially when it's cold outside. One time I was actually talking to God and I asked him, Lord, why? And he said, you just get a little taste of the suffering that my son Jesus tasted on the cross for you and all your sin. I said, thank you, Jesus, for the finished work of the cross, man. God was literally trying to slow me down. I didn't listen. I got released from the hospital that night, went right back to using meth in my wheelchair. You can't escape yourself. You're always there. It's better to start the process of healing now rather than continuing to run from your past hurts, habits, and hang-ups. It takes time, but I can honestly say you are worth it. I'm worth it. Together with God, we can be healed and whole and live in victory and freedom in Jesus' name. Come on. In 2004, at the height of my addiction, or what some people would call my rock bottom, I robbed an ASU Christian frat house. God will reach you and get you just the way he knows he needs to. It's better to just surrender, submit to him now, and have him get you later. Trust me. I was locked up in prison from 2011 to 2013. Prison made me way worse. There was no rehabilitation in there for me. It was easier for me to get high in there than it was on the streets. Inside prison, you ain't got to go look for it. Whatever you want, it's in there, and it's all usually right on your cell. Every tattoo I have, I got in prison. I made all the ink myself. My cellmate was the one who gave me all the tattoos. In prison, I developed an... Oh. testing. In prison, I developed an IV drug addiction and began using heroin for my first time in life. I got, I got hooked, man. I got hooked on prescriptions, on morphine. Needless to say, in prison, you share needles, which I did, and I contracted hepatitis C, which God is currently in the process of healing me through medication. Thank you, Jesus. Um, I, had no, I had no hope. I had no life. I had no direction when I got out of prison. Where did I go? Back to mom and dad's. Because the door was always open in mom and dad's. Until it wasn't. Because I continued to use dope and drink. And I was a horrible influence on my brother and sister. They actually had had enough. They kicked me out. To summer of 2014, I entered into a program called Teen Challenge of Phoenix. Let's go. Let's go. Jesus! Teen uh, in Teen Challenge, the, the program, that's where Jesus met me for the first time in my life. My day, dang, I'm not going to cry. <laughs> my day is August 26, 2014. That was the day my whole life started to change, man. Teen Challenge, I started to learn the basics of walking with Jesus and following his lead through the Holy Spirit. I learned to pray. I learned to talk to God and give things to him and not take them back. And be real with him. I started to open my Bible. Started to come alive for me like it never did before. All those stories that I learned when I was a kid, they actually came to life for me in his word when I was in Teen Challenge. One of the first scriptures I memorized was Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. 
It says, don't worry about anything. Pray about everything. Thank God for what you have. Ask him for what you need. I'm baptized with the, the Holy Ghost. It's full of the power of God, man. It's almost like an awakening or a light switch being turned on inside you. It's really hard to describe, but you can feel it. It's God's power alive in you and wanting to move through you and breathe through you as his kids. It's the Holy Spirit. Upon leaving Teen Challenge in 2015, I was working in a restaurant cutting tomatoes when I heard God for the first time speak to me. He said, son, I have so much more for you. It stuck with me for like three or four days till I finally reached out to one of the pastors who had came into Teen Challenge to visit us, had a word for me that one day we'd be in full-time ministry together. He gave me his card. So that weekend I reached out to him and he was in California. He said to come out there with him. He was, in a, he was actually uh, in, in a ministry and he told me to come out. So I took a leap of faith and went. Sometimes to grow, you got to go. I started to work with the first men in my life that took the time to disciple me in my faith walk. The Apostle Reuben Reyna and Prophet Ryan Beck. They're involved in the Living Word Christian Center ministry. They have hundreds of, hundreds of churches all over the world. Reach, teach, mend, and send is their vision. I was over there 2015, 2016, and 2017 helping raise up men into their calling through discipleships in the men's homes. One day, I believe God is going to use the ministry that we started as a family called Speak Life to open homes for discipleship through the 501c3 nonprofit. In 2018, I was in the process of being ordained through the Global Foursquare Ministry when I fell and I relapsed hard over and over and over again. 2019 was the worst of it all. When you go back to doing the things that you used to do before you were in relationship with God, and now you got the Holy Spirit living inside you. The things that I was doing that used to be fun, now they were hell. They were making me miserable. It wasn't just horrible on the outside anymore. Now it's horrible on the inside too. It was like God gave me a new heart and the things from the old lifestyle no longer fulfilled me the way they used to. I knew I was doing things that I should not be doing. In the end of 2019, it was November. I was kidnapped and held with my own weapons for seven days. It was crazy. A whole lot of love and God moving in some of the craziest ways you can imagine. Finally, they let me go. It was around Thanksgiving of 2019. That's when I finally took my parents' advice and went back to Teen Challenge in January of 2020. I was there for 40 days. And I left on the 41st day with so much stuff. God had actually brought one of the brothers from California that I was in ministry with off the beach and out of his alcohol stupor onto a greyhound here to Phoenix into Teen Challenge with me so that he could help me carry all my stuff out. Because when I went to that place, I brought everything that I had. And the Lord knows me. I've never had much. So what little I do have, I take really good care of. And when you leave Teen Challenge, you have to take everything with you. <sighs> After I left Teen Challenge in February of 2020, it was right before the shutdown of the world. God wanted me home looking back on it. The shutdown was horrible for a lot of people, but I grew by leaps and bounds with God and my relationship with Him. I began to do what I know I should have all along. I started getting plugged into a great community of believers. I attend Lifelink Church. Let's go, guys. <laughs> I started serving, giving my yes, finding different ways to help and serve. All God is looking for is a yes. He will use that and take you places that you never thought you would go with Jesus at the center of your life and a yes in your heart. I never thought I'd be up here doing this. I showed back up to LifeLink in 2020. By the fall of 2021, they offered me to be a part of their facilities and maintenance team, which of course I said yes. I was serving and doing all the work as a volunteer. Now my church was offering to pay me for it. Yes! <laughs> I was stunned at the time. <laughs> if they only knew what I've done in my life. If they only knew the deep, dark secrets. Those are the secrets that I had to let go of. In 2022, we started to celebrate recovery step study at LifeLink. I started the process of healing every Monday night 
We met from February of 2022 to October of 2022. That's where I started working the steps, receiving my healing. Since then, I've been asked to lead the Celebrate Recovery Ministry at LifeLink Church. Also, LifeLink Church has put me through their work-study program where they've given me a Bible college through Theos Bible College. Uh, I've got five classes left and I'll be a, have my bachelor's degree in theology. It's, come on, dude! Um, I'm serving on Sundays on the prayer team for the altar team. I've also uh, started in leading the LifeLink Church jail ministry. We're helping bring hope to people that are locked up. And, um, and we're starting another step study in February of 2024. Honestly, I thought 2019 was the worst of it all. I thought 2019 was going to kill me. It just kept getting worse and worse with the horrible decisions I was making. Standing here today, I can say I'm a better man. I'm a better son. I'm a better brother because I surrendered to God and started my healing journey with him in Celebrate Recovery. I'm on my way to wherever God is taking me. I honestly don't know. I just know that God is driving the bus of my life now not me. We all have a race to run in life, according to the Apostle Paul in the Word of God. If you haven't started running your race yet, it's time to start. If you were running and you fell or you got pushed over, I'm here to lend you that hand and help you up. It's time to start running again. If you are running your race that God has called you to, it's time for you to look around, see who you can help start running their race. I really want to say thank you for letting me share with you tonight. God bless you.